Now let's, let's, let's ask this question. Why are these verses in the Bible? Behold, Jesus said in Matthew 10 verse 16, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be you therefore wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. You know, violence is not an option when it comes to Christians. The idea of someone blowing up an abortion clinic is repugnant. Uh, uh, violence is not an option. But, notice this, uh, Matthew 10 and verse uh, 17. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the council and will scourge you in their synagogue. Now, what's this talking about? They're going to deliver you up to the council? I mean, how, why would they do this if you're living this Christian life where you're never noticed? No one ever notices you. You never speak up. You never do anything. This, Jesus is saying, beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the council and scourge you in their synagogues. And, verse 18, you shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. What? Brought before kings? How does this happen? How, how could we be brought before a king? Christians brought before a king. Well, if you never speak out against the king, you never will be brought anywhere. In other words, you don't get into trouble with government unless you trouble government. You know, when you sit there and don't tell a person the truth because you're afraid of how they might respond, or you're afraid, you know, you have fear of rejection, or they may kill you because you're afraid of how they might respond, or the truth of the matter is, when you do that, you have rejected that truth for them. It is our Christian duty to stand up for what is right and to stand against what is wrong. That's why we're here, don't you know? That's why God has placed Christians on this earth, to stand up for what is right and to stand against what is wrong. Continuing on in verse, uh, skipping to verse 22, and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endure to the end shall be saved. How could you be hated? How could a Christian be hated? Well, listen, let me tell you how. When your life, your message, condemns the life that others are living, that's how you can be hated. When your life, your message, condemns the life that others are living, that's how you can be hated. There is corruption in the highest places in our society, and Christians, we are to speak out against it. Now, you might say, well, what can I do? I'm old. What can I do? Well, you can write a letter to the newspaper. Some of the articles I've seen in the newspaper are downright disgusting. You think an idiot wrote the letter. But, but you, you can stand up and be heard. Your voice can be heard simply by writing an article to the editor or to the newspaper. You know, here's the bottom line. The church has been t way, 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 way too long examining its own navel. You know, just playing church. It's time to speak the truth. It's time to speak the truth about crime, about abortion, about homosexuality, about murder, about theft, about morals, about value-free sex education, to speak the truth. You know, you are involved in politics, whether you like it or not. You really are. And you have two choices, to sit there in your glass cathedral and remain silent or to speak the truth. When I say you're involved in politics, governing others, are you a parent? Do you govern the way your children, you know, how you bring them up? Yeah, you're involved in it, whether you like it or not. And we are to speak the truth. Should a Christian be involved in politics? I want to leave you with this concept. Living free requires character. And character requires an internal morality based upon divine absolutes. absolutes excuse me. An internal morality based upon divine absolutes. Not man's values. You see, if we can create our own values, then we can we're free to change those values. We're free to dismiss their va these values. It's not man's value that I'm talking about. I'm talking about divine absolute, and it's sad to say that Christians can't even agree on the absolutes. I mean, it's sad when we can't even get together and say, yeah, that's what the Bible says is wrong, and we're gonna stand 
against it. It's sad to see that. So let's understand this. Let's, you know, I don't know, I get ready to say let's save our nation. I don't think that's possible, but let's at least as a Christian, let's stand up for what is right and let's stand against what is wrong. And it is your duty. One day you're gonna to answer to your savior for the choices that you made. And a lot of us are gonna to have to answer for our silence of doing and saying nothing. And that's what's really in your Bible.